All right, here we go. I got my messy bun on and I'm ready to party. Let's do this. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I thought it would be fun to go to WikiHow and react to their how to cosplay article. WikiHow, if you don't know, is this website that um, basically has a bunch of step-by-step -step walkthroughs for various things, which some get far more ridiculous than others. Some of my absolute favorites include how to hold in your poop, because apparently these are things that people really need to have a step-by-step -step walkthrough for. Um, yes, WikiHow can become a very weird and very laughable website, so that's why I thought it'd be fun to do a reaction video and to see what their How to Cosplay article has to offer. Is it ridiculous? Is it actually helpful? Who knows? We're gonna be finding out today. Before I jump into it, however, I do want to give credit where credit is due. I didn't actually come up with the idea for this video. This video was actually inspired by Lovely Lore, who, if you don't know, one of my absolute favorite creators, please by all means check her out. Her channel focuses on Lolita fashion and she recently did a video where she went and reacted to the WikiHow article for how to be a Lolita. It was very good. So I thought it'd be fun if I did my own kind of little twist on it. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. Again, please be sure to check out Laura. Her content is fantastic. I will have a link up there and down in the description to go check her out. Um, so yeah, let's see what WikiHow has to offer. Today, we're gonna let WikiHow teach me how to cosplay. All right, so our intro here says, cosplaying is a lot of work, whether you choose to make, commission, or buy your cosplay. You need to spend a lot of time researching and putting together your cosplay. Once you have it finished, you still need to add the details, such as hair and makeup. Having a few poses in mind and knowing how to get into character would also be a good idea. Despite all of this work, cosplaying is fun and the effort is worth it. Um, everything they're saying so far is accurate. So we're gonna start with part one of four, which is planning your cosplay. This is gonna be a very long article. There are four parts to this article. So one, decide who you want to cosplay. Choose a character you can relate to or that you are similar to. Keep in mind that you don't have to cosplay as your race, body type, or gender. Anyone can cosplay. On a similar note, your cosplay does not have to be from anime or anything of Japanese origin. You can cosplay a character from a movie, television show, or even a Western animation like Disney. If this is your first time cosplaying, however, you may want to choose a character with a simpler design. Okay, right off the bat, they're making excellent choices. I love that they put an emphasis on the fact that anyone can cosplay. That is such an important thing um, to put in there. Choosing a character that's similar to you, that's, that's again, a really good idea, especially when you're first beginning and you need motivation for that first project. Um, you want a character that you can really relate to and that you really love to kind of motivate you through each project. So that's really good. Um, it is also a common misconception that cosplay exclusively has to be from anime, which is not true. It can be from anything. So um, they're actually making some really good points that I didn't really expect them to make like right off the bat because kind of your basic how to cosplay stuff doesn't usually focus on, on those kinds of points right off the bat, but these are very important points to focus on. And also the fact that you, you want to choose something with a simpler design, that's also a good way to start off this article. So, um, so far I'm actually very pleasantly surprised by how this article is going. Um, they're making really good points. And I, again, really love that they're making inclusive, putting emphasis on the fact that anyone can cosplay. That's such an important thing to put in there. And something that I did not expect WikiHow to put as like a message. So good job, WikiHow. So far, so good. Step two, we have get reference pictures. Don't just get any reference pictures, however. Get ones of the specific version of the character you are dressing up as. Many characters have multiple outfits. Some characters' costumes change slightly from film to film. For example, Iron Man's bodysuit changes a little in each Iron Man and venture the film. Batman spots a different design with each film as well. I think they mean sports. Sports a different design with each film as well. This may not be possible with fan art. In this case, get the best quality image of the fan art you are basing your cosplay on. Um, I mean, that's true. That all of this is true. Um, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory though. Obviously, if you're getting references for a, a cosplay you want to get references for the version that you're doing. It doesn't really make sense to get references for a version that you're not doing. I feel like we don't really have to be explained to that. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory, but anyway, they're not saying anything that's wrong, so good there, I guess. Um, three, determine how much money and effort you are willing to put into your cosplay. You don't need to spend a lot of money in order to have a great looking cosplay. If you want your cosplay to look great for cheap, however, be prepared to spend lots of time on it. This is such a good point. Yes, this is... Yes, absolutely. There's that diagram that has the element of money, time, and quality, and out of those you can only pick two, right? So if you want to have a good looking cosplay for cheap, then it's going to take more time. If you want a good looking cosplay that is not going to take as much time, it's going to be more expensive. That's totally right. Some cosplays will also require more than just sewing, such as casting parts in resin or making foam armor. The more time you have before the event, the more elaborate you can make your cosplay. If the event is this weekend, consider something simpler. Um, this is really good. 
so far so good yeah i agree with all of that whenever i do panels or i'm talking to like new cosplayers about doing cosplays on a budget i always make sure to tell them that it is going to take more time because one way to save money is to put in more time um so yeah all of this that they're saying is really good so far wow wiki how Good job. Four, design your own cosplay if you want to be more original. You can always go with a screen accurate version of the character you are cosplaying. Alternatively, you can put a unique spin on it, such as a historically accurate version of a Disney princess or a steampunk version of a character. You can even do a crossover between two costumes, such as a Sailor Scout version of a Pokemon. Look at pictures of other people's cosplays or fan art for inspiration. If you decide to base your cosplay off of someone's fan art, ask the artist's permission. It's the polite thing to do. That's also really good. That's something that I kind of didn't think to tell a beginner is that you can also do your own thing but it is it's good that they're putting that out there because yeah cosplay doesn't have to be completely accurate to the reference image you can do your own original thing and you can totally be creative and that's totally fine and i think some people when they're first starting out they're kind of worried that maybe there are rules about what you can and can't cosplay like is it okay to do a crossover is it okay to to do your own thing um and it absolutely is so it's good that they're putting this in here and i also am really happy that they had the point that you should ask permission if you're using somebody else's fan art design that is a really good point yeah they're being really good with this article so far wow all right five plan ahead and give yourself time to finish your cosplay even if you are buying your cosplay you still need to account the time it takes to create it if you are commissioning someone to make it and the time it takes to ship it out if you are making the cosplay you might want to give yourself extra time to fix any mistakes the more difficult and detailed the costume is the more time you'll need to make it yep again totally good now we're moving on to part two of four which is making or buying your cosplay make a list of everything you need this includes every piece of the entire outfit down to the belt gloves and shoes it should also include things like wigs if you are using one makeup and any unnecessary undergarments that sounds weird i i'm just gonna say it i'm sorry any necessary undergarments like maybe they mean like like tights or something but it that sounds weird i <laughs> no thank you um i mean i guess you should think about your undergarments but like I don't know. Um, <laughs> if you are going to make the cosplay, write down the materials you'll need for each piece. For example, white blouse, white cotton, white thread, white buttons, green skirt, dark green twill or wool suiting, matching thread, zipper, hook, closure, brown loafers, knee high socks, skin tone bra. Oh yeah. So they are literally just talking about like actual undergarments that you'll need. Okay. I mean, I guess it's, it's good to think about your undergarments. You don't want to be wearing like a black bra with a white bodysuit. So good stuff but i don't know it's weird it's weird that they're like think about your undergarments um but yeah no it, it's really good and then the image that they have here is also really good this is um similar to when i'm doing a costume breakdown um that's the kind of thing that i would totally do is where you have a picture of the character you have everything colored in and then you have arrows pointing to each part of the costume so that you can easily break it down that's all totally accurate and yeah everything that they're saying is definitely correct um, two, use patterns when you're sewing cosplay. You can buy a pattern from the fabric store or draft your own. If you decide to use store-bought patterns, be prepared to modify them to suit the character and your figure. Many patterns also include a list of recommended fabric types. Take these into consideration. You may need to change the shape of the hem or sleeves of the pattern. If a pattern is the right shape but the wrong length, you'll need to add slash subtract length to slash from it. Don't be afraid to change the shape of the collar to suit your cosplay. Um, this is again really good. This is really, really thorough. This is definitely more thorough than when I did my beginner cosplay video um, I didn't even talk about patterns so it's good that they're talking about having to alter patterns it's good that they're talking about the fact that you can get them from the fabric store because for a beginner cosplayer if you're new to sewing and everything I would definitely recommend getting a commercial pattern and then slightly altering it the fewer alterations that you have to do the better because when you're first learning how to use patterns it can be a little bit daunting so you don't want to have to um, alter things as you're going because that's just gonna make them even more daunting so yeah it's good that they're covering all of this and like the pattern is the first thing that you're gonna start out with 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 your costume so this is good um, step three, don't be afraid or ashamed to buy pieces for your cosplay. You don't have to make everything from scratch. If your cosplay requires an everyday item, it would be easier just to buy it. For example, if you're cosplaying Kagome from Inuyasha, it would be much cheaper, easier, and faster to buy a pair of knee-high socks rather than make them yourself. This is also really good. People are, again, when they're first starting out, they're worried about there being certain rules to cosplay. Like, are you allowed to buy things? Are you allowed to not make everything yourself? And you, absol that, you absolutely don't have to make everything yourself. Um, so yes, and it is also, it is really 
really good to take into consideration what parts of the cosplay are just kind of mundane items that you can easily buy from a store and going and getting those because that's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches because it's not worth it making knee-high socks from scratch unless you're really hardcore about it it's really it's much more worth it just to buy it so yeah this is totally good four consider buying and modifying piece piece to suit your cosplay i think they meant pieces to suit your cosplay sometimes you may come across an item that is the right shape but the wrong color other times you may come across something that is the right color but a little too long instead of making a whole new piece get the almost right piece then modify it for example if something is the right shape but the wrong color dye it if it is too long or has sleeves, cut it. Don't forget to hem it though, if needed. Plain boots to match your cosplay or make boot covers for them. Again, yeah, good, good. Totally agree with that. Um, five, do your research when buying or commissioning a cosplay. There is no guarantee that the cosplay will fit you perfectly, especially if you buy it from a cosplay shop. The quality may be top notch or it may be subpar. Most importantly, research the company or the person you are buying or commissioning the cosplay from. Make sure they are reliable. Yep, that's totally accurate. Yep, look up reviews. I have reviews on my channel if you're interested um, in those. Shameless self plug. I'll have that linked up there if you're interested in checking out um, some of my cosplay website reviews. Um, yep, that is all. It is very important to do your research when you're buying a pre made cosplay or getting something commissioned. So um, all of that is good. Six, don't forget the props and accessories. While not absolutely necessary, they can really take your cosplay to the next level. A prop can help you come up with more creative poses, while accessories can make your cosplay more realistic. As with the rest of your cosplay, you can make, buy, or commission your props and accessories. Many animated films use simple designs. If you are cosplaying as a Disney princess, consider adding some jewelry or hair pieces. Read the convention's rules regarding props to find out what is and what isn't allowed. Okay, that is another really good point. Okay, they're doing... They're doing really like no shade, man. This this article is actually doing a really good job. Um, it is very important to read the rules of the convention because certain things you're not allowed, like you're not allowed to have like real sores. You're not allowed to have props that are made of certain materials like metal um, or and sometimes wood, like you're not allowed to take a real wooden bat in into conventions. And of course, a lot of those guidelines are the same for most conventions, but they do sometimes slightly change depending on the event. So it's important to kind of on a case by case basis, look at the rules for each convention um, to see what they'll allow you to take in. But yes, this is totally true. Props do help with doing more creative poses um, and they do definitely take your cosplay up to the next level, but they are not totally necessary. So yeah, this this hits all the, all the points. All right, now we are on part three of four, doing your hair and makeup. One, plan your look. As with the costume, think about how the character's makeup and hair would translate into real life. Can you get away with using your real hair or will you need to get a wig? Makeup will also help you look better in photos, but do you want a more stylized or realistic look? Take a moment to think about what sort of look you are going for. Okay, that's a really, again, that's a really good point. Um, Absolutely, you can use your real hair for a cosplay, but if the character's hair is too different, then it is better to use a wig. Makeup does help you look better in photos. If you can't wear makeup, it's not totally a necessity but it does help you look less washed out in photos um, and it is important to figure out if you want to be more stylized or realistic so if you're doing something like from Borderlands if you want to do the cell shading or if you want to do a more natural makeup look that's something that's really important to take into consideration so I'm really glad that they're that they're hitting all of these points this is the same kind of thing that I would totally say to a beginner cosplayer this is all really good um, use your own hair if you're willing to cut and dye it if your hair is almost straight for the character but not quite don't be afraid to straighten curl or add extensions if if you are more daring, you can even dye your hair or cut it to better suit the character. Only do this if you actually like the style, however, you'll be stuck with it for a few months. Um, okay, that's something that I would not have thought of. I would not have thought of recommending dyeing your hair for a character. Um, I definitely agree with the straightening, curling, and adding hair extensions. It all really depends on if you think that that would be more convenient than buying a wig, because obviously if you're using hair extensions, you really have to weigh that. Like Either you can add the extensions to your hair, which I know takes a little bit of time, or you could just plop a wig on and you'll be good to go. It really depends on what you prefer and what's in your budget. I would definitely not recommend dyeing your hair. Like I think if you if you really wanted to dye your hair for a cosplay, you could totally do that, but that would be far from my first recommendation. I would definitely recommend doing a wig over dyeing your hair, but I guess, you know, teach their own. Yeah, I didn't even 
think about the idea of dyeing your hair for a certain character. That's definitely not something that I would do. I'd definitely go for a wig that's much easier. Use a high quality wig if you don't want to mess with your real hair. For the best look, purchase a high quality wig from a reputable wig or costume shop. Avoid using the cheap wigs from the part of your Halloween store. Very good point. Um, if you want your cosplay to look even more realistic, you can get a lace front wig instead. That is definitely true. Um, wear a wig cap under the wig. Make sure that it is skin toned or that it matches your wig. Use bobby pins that keep your wig in place. Make sure that they match the wig color. Pin your hair up under the wig. You don't want it sticking out under the wig. Okay, yeah, um, all of that is definitely accurate. Depending on the character's hairstyle, it can still look natural even if you're not you know, using a lace front wig. It kind of depends on a case by case basis. I think you can still have a natural looking wig without it being a lace front, right? Like if you're doing a character with a fringe, obviously a lace front really wouldn't help you in that situation. And like getting a wig that isn't a lace front wouldn't make it look less natural in that particular case, but I guess that's kind of self-explanatory. Yeah, everything that they're saying is definitely good. Staying away from Halloween or party star wigs, that's a very good idea. Um, yeah, it all that all checks out. Four, style your hair or the wig. Whether you are using your own hair or a wig, you'll need to style it. Most wigs rarely look like the intended character's hair, so you'll likely need to trim it. In some cases, you'll need to straighten it or curl it. You will also need to comb your hair or the wig into the right style, then set it with hairspray. Use hairspray and styling wax to help shape your hair. If you are styling a wig, invest in a styrofoam wig head. Yep. Do not use curling irons or flat irons on wigs. Use the hot water curling or straightening method. Okay, that is incorrect. Um, it depends on the wig. If you're getting a cheap wig from eBay, you don't want to use high heat on it. You could still use a curling iron or a hair straightener, but you'd want it to be on the very lowest setting and you'd want to test it on a little bit of the hair first to see if it's going to melt. Um, I feel like if it is susceptible to melting using hot water is not really going to save you in that situation because you're still technically using heat on it um but saying that you can't use curling irons or flat irons on any wig is definitely incorrect um if you're getting a wig from like arda wigs epic cosplay wigs or any kind of high quality wig shop those fibers are meant to be curled and straightened and most cosplayers do use hair curlers and hair straighteners on their wigs to style them that's a core component of wig styling so um that part is incorrect five wear makeup even if you are a guy or cross playing a male character. Makeup is important for cosplay. It makes your skin appear smoother and more photogenic. For most characters, you will need a natural look, base foundation, neutral eyeshadow, and eyeliner. If you're cosplaying a girl, you can add mascara or false lashes. From there, you can bring more life to your character with lipstick and contouring or blush. You can use contouring to make your face look more feminine or masculine. Even male characters can benefit from lipstick. Use a neutral color. You can use a different color of eyeshadow, but only if it suits the character and costume. If you're not able to wear makeup, it's totally okay to not wear makeup for a cosplay it just makes the cosplay look much better if you are wearing makeup it definitely does add to it um, and it is true you do want to be wearing makeup even if you are a guy or even if you're cosplaying a male character photos wash you out and wearing wigs also washes you out so again you're just going to photograph better if you are wearing makeup but again like i keep saying if you aren't able to wear makeup you don't necessarily have to but yeah everything that they're saying about cosplay makeup is definitely accurate now we're at part four of four which is putting the cosplay into play one practice getting into cosplay before the big event this includes includes applying the makeup, putting the wig on, putting in and taking out contact lenses, etc. If something doesn't fit or feel comfortable, take a moment to fix it. Make sure that your cosplay is comfortable and durable. If you are having troubles with contact lenses, leave them out. Don't leave costume contact lenses in your eyes for the entire convention. That is asking for a serious infection. Okay, I can't speak to the contact lens part of it because I've never worn contact, so I can't comment there, um, but this is very good. A lot of us cosplayers will not test our cosplays beforehand, and that is always something that is really regrettable. Um, oftentimes like you're pressed for time and you just don't have the time to put everything on but it is very good to take a moment once you're finished making everything put it all on see how it feels see how it looks and if possible if, if you can get a friend to come outside with you go out for a little test shoot put the cosplay on and just practice posing in your cosplay, practice walking around in it and taking photos. Um, and that will really help you be comfortable during the convention. Um, this is something that you should do that a lot of cosplayers just don't do. Even us um, veteran cosplayers, we still like, we know we should do cos tests, but we oftentimes don't. So I'm glad they're putting this in here. This is a very good thing to do, especially if you're new to cosplay and you're not used to wearing cosplays. Like if you're, if you're like me and you've been cosplaying for 11 years and you know what wearing a wig feels like, you know what wearing makeup feels like, you know what wearing high heels and cosplay and all that stuff feels like um, it's not as big of an issue because you're kind of used to it, but it's still a good thing to do nonetheless. But if you're a beginner, you do want to kind of get used to wearing a wig and wearing makeup and wearing all that. It's a good step. It's a good step. Um, two, get into character. You don't necessarily have to act 
like your character, although you can if you want to, this is true. It would be a good idea to have some poses in mind, however. People love to take pictures of other people's cosplays at conventions, so there's a high chance that someone might want to take a picture of yours. Yes, most people at conventions do not act in character, most people just act like themselves. The only time when you act in character is if you're posing for like a showcase video, if you're doing a skit, or if you're taking photos. Those are the only times when people kind of act in character. So again, yeah, you can act in character if you want to, but you, you don't have to. That is totally optional. Um, and it is definitely good to practice your poses. Just take a take some time in front of the mirror, you know, put on some fun, upbeat music that you like to, to vibe to, and then just, you know, practice for maybe, you know, 15, 20 minutes, just striking various poses in front of the mirror and see what uh, works. That is definitely a good idea. All right, three, be respectful of other people's boundaries. There is nothing wrong with getting into character if you see someone from the same anime or series. Be aware that not everyone will want to play along with you. If they don't play along, apologize and leave them alone. Don't harass them and force them to play with you. That is a, that's fantastic. Yes, I'm very glad they're putting that in there. The other thing about respecting people's boundaries though is also not taking photos without permission. That's really important and also not touching people without permission. So I kind of wish that they had had that in there because that's a much more prominent issue that cosplayers encounter is people um, touching them or taking photos without their permission and you know disrespecting their boundaries in that particular way but most people the the issue of somebody being in character and coming up with you and wanting you to be in character with them isn't something that i or most of my friends have really um encountered i'm sure it happens but it's not the most kind of pressing issue so that's definitely a good thing to have in the article but i wish they had also said not to take people's photos or touch them without permission. Four, try not to take things too seriously. Cosplay is supposed to be fun. Instead of comparing yourself to everyone else, feel proud of the work you did. Meet up with friends and make new ones. If you are shy, consider going to some panels, gatherings, or other events. There's lots to do at conventions while in cosplay. If you do like competition, consider joining the cosplay contest or masquerade. Most conventions will have one. Um, yeah, this is all totally accurate. I'm really glad they put this in this article because a lot of people can get wound up in the industry part of cosplay. It can feel daunting, basically, um, seeing people who do cosplay as a career and see people who have much more experience than you that can kind of make you feel more self-conscious um so i'm really glad that they had this in here i'm um, talking about not taking it too seriously you always want to put the play in cosplay you don't want to take it too seriously yeah no this is this is a good step um five remember that cosplay is not consent Ooh, they have this in here okay this is good um if someone makes you feel uncomfortable speak up report them to security or con ops if someone is harassing you and con ops or security are not around call for help while these instances are not common at conventions they still happen your safety is very important Stay smart. Don't go to empty or solitary places with people you don't know. Stick with a friend or a person you trust, especially if you are out at night. Okay, I am so glad that they put this in here. This is very, very important. Totally. If somebody is disrespecting your boundaries, if someone is making you uncomfortable, if somebody is following you, if somebody says something inappropriate, you can totally go to con security and tell them about that. It is very important to take that seriously. And yeah, it is very important to make sure that you're that you have like safety in numbers, especially at night when you're going around at conventions. So. Um, I'm really glad that they put the cosplay is not consent in there because it's very important. Like I've had people touch me inappropriately while I'm in cosplay and I, you know, in, in the moment you don't think to go talk to security. You think that you just have to deal with it by yourself and you absolutely don't, you know, security is there to help you. And that is harassment if somebody touches you inappropriately. So um, I'm really glad they put that in there. Okay, and that is the final step. So overall, I think this was a very thorough and very helpful article and everything that they put in there was definitely accurate. Um, um, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't expect them to put in there, which they did, and again, they were so thorough. It wasn't one of those kind of stupid WikiHow articles. This was actually genuinely helpful, which is awesome to see from a WikiHow article. Um, all of the images that they had in there were good and accurate. I mean, there were a few little nitpicks that I had, which I talked about. Um, but aside from that, I think if you are a beginner cosplayer and you're looking for a helpful article to get you started, this is actually a really good one to read. So that's awesome. Um, yeah, the only thing that I wish they had put in there is to look up tutorials. They didn't really talk about looking up tutorials, but if you are a beginner cosplayer and you're trying to learn how to sew wig style, um, do makeup or literally anything to do with cosplay, the internet is your friend. Um, the internet can totally help you. You can totally just look on YouTube and look up sewing tutorials, makeup tutorials, wig style tutorials, all that stuff. Um, so I wish that they had put that in there because I feel like they didn't really talk a lot about kind of where you can learn to do the basic steps of cosplay. Like they talked about looking for patterns and altering patterns, but when it comes to actually sewing the patterns, they don't really tell you how to go about that. Um, so yeah, my 
my only major nitpick with this article is that they should tell you to look up cosplay tutorials. But aside from that, this was a very good article and I, I really like don't have much to say about it. Um, so good job, WikiHow. Glad you did good here. <laughs> um, I guess that's all I have to say. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of this article. Do you think that it was helpful? And what points would you have added to this article? Is there anything in here that I didn't comment on that you think should have been um, changed or something that you sh think should have been added to this article for beginners? Please, by all means, let me know. Um, and also let me know, since there are other articles on WikiHow about how to cosplay, and some of them are a little bit weirder than others, let me know if you'd like to see this become a series on my channel where I react to various cosplay WikiHow articles. There you go! <laughs> That was fun! I hope you guys enjoyed it! Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more cosplay videos, please by all means go subscribe and hit the bell notification to see more videos from me. I put out new videos every Sunday. And um, yeah, thanks for, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you guys all next time. But until then, Panda Faces, please be sure to take care. Bye!